Hey, I'm Chris Lipe with How to Sing Like Marilyn Manson. There's lots of neat coordinations and possibilities that we can bring out in our voices if we know what to listen for and we know how to put those in our own voices. And if you like the approaches and methods that I'm using in this video, you'll love my free course, Seven Highly Effective Vocal Exercises That Are Quiet and Won't Annoy Your Neighbors. You can get that free course by clicking the link below in the video info. All right, let's get into it. Example one. Now, of course, there's multiple things going on, multiple layers here. But he makes an incredible use of subtle compression or compression in a different way and connects it to vocal fry. Even in the midst of the same take, there's that going on. And you can listen through the layers and hear that happening here. He's got that resist or I'll beat ya. Resist, where he's connecting his lowest notes to his vocal fry. And then you can hear also the shimmering of this on top. And that, that right there, as we prime our voice to exist in this area, that is compression with complete open primary chords and you get that neat squeaky sound that happens every once in a while which we'll hear more later but if you want to get into this uh, go down low use very little air and explore connecting fry to your lowest note and you can get really low low there's some low things going on there and then we add more airflow and we close more air off and we get this yes yeah. fun stuff all right here we go another one okay now here's a perfect example of what i'm talking about and I don't want you starts. And I don't want you. And I don't want you. And I don't come out of fry. Come out of fry. And I don't want you. But you can hear this. I am I'm pushing a little harder with my primary support. And I'm closing off air above the larynx. And those little squeaks you hear are happening above the larynx as well. Listen to what happens here though. And I don't want you. There's that going on. And I don't want you. And I don't need you. Here he's got the voice and this going on. And I don't want you. And I don't need you. And I don't need you. Sure, there's double tracking. But there's also this happening where he's got that, that wonderful loud whisper. That aggressive whisper over phonation. Uh, and I don't need you. There's two things happening at the same time. And then he connects that with Fry in an amazing way. He connects it with regular phonation in an amazing way. And the more creepy you get, the more squeaks you have. Okay, next. Okay, so let's go from that. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. It's not your fault that you're always wrong. Now, it's a little different, though, uh, when he gets into his head voice there. Listen particularly to, the, to his head voice. Wrong. It's raspy, too. It's your always. It's not your fault that you're always wrong. It's not your fault that you're always wrong. It's not your fault that you always, it's not your fault. Now, the trick is getting the balance of, we don't want to be too, it's not your fault that you always, rah. that's not quite right. It's not your fault. We want to always be conscious of connecting to fry. And then you've got this fry and ah, aggressive whisper happening. So we've got, ah, there it is. 
is it's not yeah. and then add a little bit of get a little bit more engagement with your primary chords outside of regular fry and then you've got it then we keep that raspiness that closure above our larynx as we go into our head voice it's not your fault that we're it's not your fault that we're always wrong wrong next Okay, now here we get into more full voice stuff, which is really interesting because he comes from Fry. Listen to the very beginning. There's a time. There's a time. And now let's talk about his general tone here. This is not, there's a time to discriminate. No, he's using strategic compression here. Whether he really is, th- I'm using, compre- I don't think he's thinking that, but in the characters that he plays and the mantras that he projects, he's got this, uh, uh, yes, yes, uh, that's happening. You combine that with a constant engagement in Fry. Uh, there's a time uh, uh, regular uh, pushing from my support holding back air here and then at the same time showing my teeth uh, there's a time now I'm also I'm throwing the resonance back toward my soft palate here but I'm not I'm not uh, trapping or or limiting airflow there in other words, I'm not cupping my tongue. I'm not doing that. There's a time. I'm just thinking resonance back toward my soft palate as opposed to forward resonance. I'm letting some of that come out by showing my teeth. There's a time to discriminate. And then you can hear with that distortion, it brings that that uh, brightness out in his voice even more. There's a time to discriminate. Uh, there's this sense that he's pushing and holding back air and placing that resonance in a way that creates this sound. It's a neat sound. Next. Yeah, we're getting into these now. Now, his screams are great because they they continue this journey right from fry to this uh, to getting that squeak. And then he picks a pitch, even though he's not singing here and this pitch is not a note. That's the pitch, right? We need to combine some of the other things that he's borrowing from his other voices, his other characters, and add this desperation. So let's get there. Hey! You! What do you say? Hey! You! What do you say? Hey! As we dial this in, we're going to combine that reaching for that pitch hey letting our voice start to crack over it yeah and then when we feel that crack we're going to inject a bit more support and think a bit more compression hey hey and then we're going to live that in between hey yeah As you're dialing it in, let your voice crack so you can get that feel and then practice it, practice getting the in-between and you'll get it. Before you know it, you're going to be able to be more consistent and not expose that break as much. Hey, you, what do you say? What do you say? What do you say? And then we can go up and down, which you hear him do. Once we've got that in between, and we have this sort of ambiguous pitch going on, we can 
manipulate the pitch because we're not tied to a note. What do you see? And go higher, but it's not like a note that's higher. It's the timbre of the scream that's higher. Super cool stuff. And we're going to see more of that here in a sec. There it is. Take it away! See how he moderates that scream? Where mo- or moderates the pitch of the scream? Oh, 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 take it away! Oh, oh, away! And there's so many, like, little nuggets in there. And granted, he's doubling this, so different takes do different things. But if you let your voice crack and you practice letting your voice crack in while you're dialing this in, you're going to get more richness and more harmonics than if you're simply just, take it away! I mean, that's, that's just like a push and then I'm, my voice is breaking up at the result of pushing more, which isn't really how you want to do screaming. Screaming doesn't have to be that loud if you have things positioned correctly. So, take it away! Some neat, neat harmonic qualities can come out next. Okay, now this gets back to his uh, kind of whispery singing, but listen to what happens. He makes this transition. To, to, dis, uh, to, to. So he's got this consciousness of dynamics that a lot of singers don't have. And that's what makes him sound so incredibly, amazingly creepy. It's dynamics. And this aids that character mindset, that character performance that he pulls off like nobody else. Uh, to disagree. To dis- There's that compression, throwing it, throwing the resonance back toward my soft palate. To dis- And then, listen to Gree. To dis- Fries down. dis dis There's an incredible lack of airflow going on here it allows you to gauge, gauge your fry in a more effective way if you can learn how to moderate your airflow to engage your fry in the middle of a phrase like that and doing it while talking practicing that is very very helpful to disagree you get that thickness by engaging fry, and you get that those lower overtones that you wouldn't otherwise get. I don't have a low voice by nature, but by engaging that fry, I can tap into it quite well. Next. Some of them want to use you. Some, some, again, come from fry. Resonance back towards your soft palate. Show your teeth. Ah, compress. Ah, some of them want to. Now here, he's being very nasal. You've heard me talk about this before, where nasal is good. Provides some uh, opportunities. This isn't want to use you. Ah, ah, hear the difference? Some of them want some of them want ah, there's a honk part of that is resonance towards my soft palate part of that is allowing my nasal passage to be open and then engaging for I next okay here's a middle tier this isn't like the screams we heard earlier We could sing it like Getty Lee. Or we could engage our fry and we can come up to it, add compression, 
and then let our voice crack a little bit. And then at the same time, we follow that guitar down, which is really neat. Let's experiment with these middle pitch screams and the higher pitch screams. And let's kind of go back and forth with them and get our voice in a place where we can, on command, do both. Now we get to work through possibly my favorite Marilyn Manson sequence. Here we go. Who am I? So witch-like. Who am I? Who am I? Okay. So what we're doing is we're starting with this aggressive whisper, which is not whispering. Not like this. Who am I? No. It's highly compressed. Uh, you get that squeak. So I'm pushing and I'm holding back air. Uh, and then letting it come through. Like this. That every once in a while, there's some primary chord engagement. As well as fry in there. So, and what you really need to do here is, is get this coordination and then just get in character, right? You can't think too hard about it after you've gotten the coordination and you can't think too hard about trying to imitate exactly his inflections. He couldn't do that. He couldn't go through and do exactly what he just did because there's this sense of being in the moment, but getting this coordination is really going to help. Okay. So first one. So you can hear the fry. Who am I? You can hear the air being stopped at the same time. You can hear the squeaks. Next. To disagree. To out there. We've got this going on. Now, this is really key. We've got uh, this going on, right? But then we've also got the rumble below it uh, that comes in and out. This is a case of the Cookie Monster. So if you can combine our evil friend Cookie Monster uh, with that upper coordination, uh, let things squeak. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Some really neat stuff. To disagree. To disagree. To disagree. And then that wonderful, short, vibrant reverb they've got on there is doing a lot for him here as well. Next. Okay, now this part, I love it because he cuts off his sound towards the end and you can hear sort of the validation in this approach by what's happening in this last part. Tell, tell the world. I, he's cutting off all the air, but he's still pushing. Tell the world. Let things happen as you experiment with this. It's so key and fun. Uh, engage your head voice. Uh, breathe in and out. 
very intensely. Engage your mouth. Don't hyperventilate, though. M7C. Continuing. M7Cs. There's that balance between open lower throat and cookie monster compression uh, or I'm, I'm using the word compression. It's, it's the same method that you'd use to you. Hey, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like a normal sort of application for compression, but we're leaving our primary cords open and using that same area above our larynx to get this. C's, seven C's. So fun. If you slow these down, you can get more and more of this. Everybody, everybody. Again, we're not full chord closure here in our head voice. Everybody, every. No, we are. We're emphasizing that. Aggressive whisper. Everybody, everybody. At the same time, we are having less chord closure. So it's truly uh, uh, plus uh, everybody. You're going to run out of air quick. And you can tell that he does too when you listen to this whole sequence. <gasps> He's breathing in a lot. It's good stuff though. Okay. From his latest. Everything engaging that fry. Now, listen carefully. Everything else is oh, I'd like you to consider how low his larynx is. Uh, between everything that we've talked about, everything else is perfume. I'm exaggerating it a little more than he is, but we have to pay careful attention to this sort of thing. Everything else is perfume. High larynx? No. He's using a uh, soft palate, you know, throwing the resonance back in his soft palate as opposed to as forward as... You still feel it in your face because he's using nasal, but it's this it's this intentionality of, of targeting the resonance to our soft palate. And at the same time, having a relatively low larynx position and then being very in touch with your vocal fry. Uh, and, and then compression as well. Perfume. Perfume. Next. I'll be the one. Yeah. I'll be the one. I love how obvious this is connecting down to Fry and how thick it makes his voice sound. But I'll be the one. And listen to the, but I'll be the one. There's this, uh, you can hear the compression that he's using. Uh, I'll be the one. And then he lets go of the airflow. Airflow moderation. Strategic airflow moderation is the key to what he's doing, uh, among other things. I really hope you enjoyed this one. I had fun making it. Again, if you liked what you saw and heard in what Marilyn Manson does in his voice, you'll love my free course, Seven highly effective quiet exercises that won't annoy your neighbors. You can find that by clicking the link below. It's completely free. And this will actually help you develop these type of coordinations even more. Uh, so that when you jump into these varied sorts of things uh, with your voice, you know how to call in the feel to get the sound that you want to get. I'll see you for more. <laughs>